In this lecture, I'd like to talk about the philosopher Bertrand Russell's theory of definite description. To warm up to this topic, consider the following argument. The author of the Iliad wrote the Odyssey. Therefore, someone wrote both the Iliad and the Odyssey. I think this argument is self-evidently valid, and we do have a way of representing its validity in our system if we, if we take for granted a certain way of translating the claim that the author of the Iliad wrote the Odyssey. So let's go ahead and let I abbreviate the predicate wrote the Iliad, and let's let O abbreviate the predicate wrote the Odyssey. Here is a suggestion about how we can represent this argument in our system. There exists an X such that X wrote the Iliad, and for any Y, if Y wrote the Iliad, then Y is identical to X, and X wrote the Odyssey. Therefore, there exists an X such that X wrote the Iliad, and X wrote the Odyssey. Okay, so what this says is that there's exactly one individual who wrote the Iliad, and that individual also wrote the Odyssey. Therefore, someone wrote both the Iliad and the Odyssey. Now notice how we translated the claim that the author of the Iliad wrote the Odyssey here. We translated that as the claim that there is exactly one individual who wrote the, the Iliad, and that individual also wrote the Odyssey. In translating that sentence in this way, we were making use of a theory of the nature of definite description that was given to us by the philosopher Bertrand Russell. Now, a definite description is a denoting phrase of the form, or at least an apparently denoting phrase of the form the F. And the philosopher Bertrand Russell held that, generally speaking, a sentence of the form the F is G is equivalent to there is exactly one F and it is G. That is, there exists an X such that X is F and for any Y, if Y is F then Y is identical to X, that part says there is exactly one F, and X is G. And the thing that is the one F is G. Okay, so this is Russell's theory of definite description. Russell's theory is controversial. Consider the sentence, the king of France is bald. Since there is no king of France, there isn't now and there wasn't in Russell's day, Russell held, per his theory of definite description, that this sentence is false. That's because, according to him, this sentence has the following logical form. There exists an X such that X is the king of France, and for any Y, if Y is the king of France, then Y is identical to X, and X is bald. And this sentence implies there exists an X such that X is the king of France. As a matter of fact, I'll have you prove that the first sentence implies the second in your homework. Well, since the first sentence implies that there exists an X such that X is the king of France, and there is no king of France, Russell held that the first sentence was false. And since he held that the first sentence is equivalent to the king of France is bald, he held that the sentence the king of France is bald is false. The claim that the king of France is bald is false, however, is a controversial claim. The philosopher Peter F. Strawson thought, for example, that this sentence is not false, but that it fails to express a claim at all. It's not even false. That's because, according to Strawson, this sentence carries the false presupposition that the King of France refers to something. And since that presupposition is false, Strawson held that a person using this sentence actually fails to make any truth of valuable claim about the world. By analogy, suppose that I pointed to my empty cupped hand and said, that's a fine red one. Well, there's nothing there in my hand. If I uttered that sentence seriously, I'm probably hallucinating or something to that effect, and you should probably call someone to come and carry me away, but uh, arguably I haven't said anything false when I do that. 
arguably I haven't said anything at all because there's nothing that the that in the sentence that's a fine red one refers to. Well, Strawson thought that the claim the king of France is bald is similar. It's not false. It just or that sent or the sentence the king of France is bald. Strawson thought is similar. It's not that that sentence is false. It's that that sentence fails to express a claim at all. So this is a point of disagreement between Strawson and Russell. Now the nature and logic of definite descriptions continues to be a matter of controversy among philosophers and linguists, and we're not going to settle that controversy here. In our subsequent dealings in this class, however, we will assume, just for the sake of argument, or for the sake of moving on at least, that Russell is right, and we will translate sentences involving definite descriptions in the manner that Russell suggests.